Medical science has made huge strides in aiding and repairing the human body when it's damaged. But will it ever be able to reverse the irreversible? Restore what's been permanently lost through damage and decay? Incredibly, in labs like this one, new materials are being developed right now to do just that. This is Charing Cross Hospital in London, England. Surgeon Rajashi Bhattacharya is performing a knee replacement operation. We were doing a total knee replacement today on a lady who presented with um, pain in her knee. You essentially replace the worn out part of the knee uh, with metal and plastic. If we did not have these materials to replace the knee joints with, then you are really struggling to take um, the pain away. So you are essentially resigning them to a life of immobility, possibly wheelchair, possibly having to use walking aids throughout their life. Today, it's a routine operation. But 50 years ago, it was unthinkable. Up until the 1960s, fixing broken bone and flesh was problematic. The body's immune system reacted to the artificial materials available at that time producing scarring. Artificial parts were often just rejected by the body. This was the challenge for scientists. Could they produce materials that the body would naturally accept? As they puzzled over this, a young doctor in Florida called Larry Hench was developing something very different. He was experimenting with new ceramic materials for use in space missions. They needed to withstand the high temperatures experienced on re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and be unreactive to radiation. Larry Hench, uh, as a young professor, was on a bus ride at a conference, found himself ne sitting next to an army colonel. The army colonel said, I've just come back from Vietnam and I'm seeing awful casualties in the field that we can't treat. We're using materials that, even though they're inert, they get rejected by the body. With all your high tech knowledge on these materials, can't you design something that will withstand the aggressive environment of the body? So Larry went back to his lab and started working on that problem. And the material he came up with was bioglass. Bioglass is a special composition of glasses that contain the same components that occur in living bone. Bioglass heralded a new era, one in which the human body accepted and embedded artificial body parts in a natural way. It revolutionized surgery, but this was just the start. With the advent of 3D printing, we're now able to print bioglass into the form of a scaffold or template to regenerate bone. This is one such scaffold, and it has wide open channels designed in optimal size to get rapid cell migration and bone ingress. And the great thing with the printing is we're able to print almost any shape or form that we want. So surgeons can actually take a scan of a patient in a defect and send it to us and we can then print something to the exact shape and function they want. The applications for Larry Hench's incredible innovation seem limitless. In fact, Sensodyne have incorporated a particular form of bioglass called Novamin that is used to help a condition that may affect as many as one in three adults, the pain of sensitive teeth. So why do we have sensitive teeth? Because our dentin, which is just under the enamel, is often exposed and it has little tubules that run into the nerve cavity. So hot and cold things can cause you pain. If you brush your teeth with a toothpaste that contains tiny particles of bioglass, it dissolves in your mouth and releases these ions like calcium and phosphate and they combine in your mouth and deposit on the dentin as natural minerals such as that that's in the dentin and enamel. The stunning innovations that have resulted from Larry Hench's work, including Novamin and other bioglass-based technology, are revolutionizing surgery and helping to rewrite the rule book of oral health care. With the future development of new materials, we will continue to be able to repair and rebuild our bodies like never before. <laughs>